Tonight, we start a five-part series on the Abrams Building, how it was constructed, and how it became home to Fifth Corps. The building was originally designed and constructed for the chemical cartel Ige Farben back in 1930. U.S. forces occupied the building at the end of World War II. Since 1952, Fifth Corps has been the primary tenant. We get more from Fifth Corps Public Affairs Office, Diana Dawa. Sir. When the Abrams building was designed in 1927 by famous architect Hans Polzig, people dubbed it an architectural monstrosity. Little did they know, the design and the structure of the building was way ahead of its time. Uh, the building was fairly innovative when it was put up because it used what was then a fairly new uh, technique of putting up the steel skeleton first and then applying the stone on the outside. And uh, this allowed them to put it up in about 18 months, which was remarkable for a building of this size. It wasn't until 1975 that the building came to be called the Abrams Building. It was rededicated in the memory of General Creighton W. Abrams, a former Army Chief of Staff and distinguished battalion tank commander during World War II. He was the commander of Fifth Corps from 1963 to 64. Today, roughly over 2,000 civilian and military employees work in the Abrams Building. There is almost nothing employees could want for. The Abrams Building offers a myriad of conveniences, just a few minutes away from work. There's a gym to work out in, racquetball courts, two banks, an APO and German Bundespost, bookstore, barbershop, and a shopette. There are three eateries to choose from, the snack bar, a German cantina, and the terrorist club. Another convenience for employees are the paternosters, an easy mode of transportation within the building. If you look at the data plate, these were built in 1930. Uh, and the idea was that they were a quick, easy, efficient way of transportation from one floor to the other. We really didn't have to wait. Rumor has it that during World War II, General Eisenhower wanted this building as his headquarters so much, he gave specific orders not to bomb it. However... His chief of staff, General Beadle Smith, did make sure that Frankfurt would be in the American zone of occupation so that they could use this building after the war. But uh, as far as the other question goes, no, I don't think so. The most distinctive feature about the Abrams building is the Eisenhower Rotunda. Tomorrow, we'll find out how the rotunda came to be and what its primary function is today. In Frankfurt, Diana Dawa, 5th Corps Public Affairs Office, for AFN News. He has two rotundas. There is the entrance rotunda and the Eisenhower rotunda. In part two of a five-part series on 5th Corps' Abrams building, Diana Dawa reports on the purpose of both rotundas before and now. When the Abrams building was first constructed, there was only one big rotunda. Today, that rotunda is divided into two. The entrance rotunda of the building uh, originally was not divided. The part that we now refer to as the Abrams rotunda was the entrance hall, with the two stairwells sweeping down like a pair of arms to greet and welcome and bring someone into the building. The other end of it, with the big curved glass windows, was, did service as an exhibition hall for uh, the various companies in the Chemical Trust. Now, the entrance rotunda is just that. On display are flags representing all the states in America and the territories, as well as flags of the 16 NATO nations. The Eisenhower Rotunda has many functions. Mostly it serves as an exhibition room displaying artifacts such as remnants of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and plaques of Medal of Honor recipients who served with Fifth Corps during both world wars. Also, the Eisenhower Rotunda serves as a training room. On any given day, you could get your annual flu shot or attend a training seminar. The fire reservoir and water nymph is what you see when looking out of the Eisenhower Rotunda's glass windows. In our next part of the Abrams series, we'll find out more about the reflecting pool and the mystery of the disappearing water nymph. In Frankfurt, Diana Dawa, 5th Corps Public Affairs Office for AFN News. Ever visited the Abrams complex in Frankfurt, Germany, has undoubtedly seen the water nymph statue that graces the reflecting pool. In part three of our Abrams series, Fifth Corps' Diana Dow reports the statue has gone through a bit of give and take over the years. In front of the terrace club sits the sculpture Am Wasser, or water nymph. This work of art was done by Frankfurt professor Fritz Klimsch. In 1931, the statue was placed between the Terrace Club and the main building, where it graced the reflecting pool. In 1945, the statue disappeared. One of our favorite myths 
is that Mrs. Eisenhower was visiting the general here and was taken aback by this nude figure and was unhappy about it. And as a result, it was removed. I don't think that's true. It's a great story. Uh, but at any rate, it disappeared and turned up later in front of Herxt Company down in Herxt. And through various negotiations, it was returned here a couple of years ago. The reflecting pool is actually a fire reservoir. At one end of the pool, a pipe juts out of the water. A fire hose would hook up here if needed. Upstairs from the reflecting pool is the Terrace Club. It was designed right along with the main building, only it was called the Casino back then. The Terrace Club basically functions today as it did in 1930. It offers lounges, a ballroom, and plenty of space for meetings or training sessions. The Terrace Club has the capacity to prepare and serve 1,600 meals at a single sitting. There are a couple of gift shops to browse through as well as beauty and barber service. Finishing up this list is the dinner theater. In part four of our Abrams series, we go back inside the main building and take a walk down the command corridor. In Frankfurt, Diana Dawa, 5th Corps Public Affairs Office for AFN News. Frankfurt, Germany is the command corridor. It takes up almost half the length of the first floor of the building. In part four of the Abrams series, 5th Corps' Diana Dawa gives a little history about the command corridor and the artifacts inside. Not many people can walk the halls of the command corridor in the Abrams building. Access to the hall is very limited. It is where 5th Corps' commanding general and upper echelon work. The command corridor first served as headquarters to the chemical cartel Ige Farben. U.S. forces moved in and took over at the end of the war. At the time, General Dwight D. Eisenhower was in command. He made his office in the space that originally served as a conference room for the chemical cartel. The Eisenhower Conference Room, which we presently use as a conference room for the Corps headquarters, was also used by Ige Farben as one of several conference rooms in the building. The largest conference room in which all of the directors of the member companies could meet is, however, presently seeing service as a handball court. The general's office is a couple of doors down. There is a desk and chair here that has been in the building for quite some time. The Corps Commander's Office, shown on the original floor plans as the office of the manager, managing director of the Ige Farben cartel, uh, has been reorganized several times. This desk uh, has been the property of the Corps Commander since at least 1951, the desk and the chair in the outer office. In our final part of the Abrams series, we look ahead to the future of the Abrams building and what it holds. In Frankfurt, Diana Dawa, 5th Corps Public Affairs Office for AFN News.